I'm your host, Aaron Heath. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 81 of the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. You can find the show notes by going to gunrightsintexas.com slash 081. Now, I have a different carry tip this week. In fact, I am going to say that this carry tip is more of a, it's more of a plug, okay? And this week's carry tip is carry the Texas 30-06 mobile app on your smartphone. Now, those of you who listen to the podcast will know that sometime back, I interviewed a, a guest on the show. I actually didn't interview him. I, it was an email interview, basically. I typed up some questions. He provided some answers. And this is Russell. I don't know if he wants to, us to share his last name or not. But anyways, Russell created the Texas 30-06 website, and that is texas3006.com. And 3006 is the numbers, not spelled out. The thing about Texas30.6.com is that it covers 30.06, 30.07, and 51% prohibitions, and it's available to the public. It's actually a database that that is maintained by the users. Let's say you're walking down the street and you got the Texas 30.6 app on your iPhone or your Android. It's available for both. You're walking down the street and... Okay, just one second. Some of you may have heard some noise in the background. That's because I have moved the studio to another room temporarily, and there's only one wall between me and the laundry room, and I've got to get my laundry done before I go to bed tonight. And with that in mind, please ignore anything you hear in the background. I'll try to edit it out, but I can't guarantee complete results. But anyways, you're walking down the street. You have your smartphone with the Texas 30.6 app installed. And you get an alert. You take your phone out. You look at it. Hey, this business over here is, has a 30-07 sign posted. I have to cover up if I go in there, assuming I'm open carrying. Or maybe it pops up a 30-06 notification. Or maybe it pops up both. But you're walking along. You find the business you're planning to go into. You walk up to the door, and you're greeted with, CHLs are welcome. Pursuant to Texas Penal Code Section 30.07, la da 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 they're welcoming open carry. Or they're welcoming CHLs, but they're prohibiting open carry. In essence, what they're telling you is, you can carry here, but cover it up. Well, you didn't get a notification, so you take the Texas 30.6 mobile app, open it up, and you take a picture of this sign and add it to the database, all from where you're at. Quick, easy, and done relatively without pain and suffering. But you add it to the database so that other people may know where there's a 30-06 or a 30-07 location. Let's say you go down the road. You find a business that has a 51% sign posted. They don't sell alcohol, so why do they have a 51%? Who knows? Who cares? Take a picture. Add it to the database. And that's why the carry tip for this episode is install the Texas 30-06 mobile app on your smartphone. Now, with that said, I want to run the audio clip that tells you how to get the show. And when we get back, we are going to touch on some listener feedback and some other stuff. Now, the listener feedback for this episode, I do have some listener feedback I want to touch on from email, but the computer that has all that, I I didn't plug it in and I've been using it all day and I'm letting it charge its battery. And with that in mind, I'm not going to go get it because it's probably about to the point where I can use it again, but I don't want to do that because I'm already recording. So I'm going to touch on some stuff that came in to the website. We have a gentleman who posted to the website under the name American Patriot. He posted twice. Let's see here. Hmm. Excuse me. I am trying to figure out the best way to go about this. The first post doesn't have very much language. Well, I actually don't see any. Here we go. You and your podcast about so-called rights has caused more harm than good to the movement. You need to shut up and take lessons from real patriots like C.J. Grisham, Corey Watkins, Lavoy Finnegan, I guess I pronounced that name correctly, David Koresh, oh wow, Randy Weaver, Tim McVeigh, oh lord, George Washington, and many more. You know what, if I was George Washington, I would hate to be included in that same list. If we could attach a turbine, a generator, to Mr. Washington in his grave, we could generate enough power to power the world entirely right now from the way he's spinning in his grave. Now, those of you who looked at the website, uh, oh, I'm recording this Monday. Those of you who looked at it Monday and did not see this comment, that's because I haven't approved it yet. I'm going ahead and approving that one, 
and I'm going to uh, do a quick reply. I'm not going to, I'm going to speak and type at the same time. So if I get mixed up, I'm sorry. Anyhow, the problem is the, the people that CJ Grisham should be offended that you're including him in the same list as Timothy McVeigh and David Koresh. Okay. Randy Weaver. Eh, I'm not going to touch on, um, Lavoy Finnecum. I'm not going to touch on Finnecum's not really something we're working on at the moment. In fact, I'm going to say that Finnecum is Finnecum's not got enough information about his situation. But the funny thing is, if you include Grisham with Corey Watkins, that's insulting to Grisham. I don't like the guy. I don't like either of them. But even I will admit, including Grisham and Corey Watkins in the same sentence is an insult to Grisham. Including anybody, including Watkins in the same sentence as Koresh and McVeigh is an insult. And like I just uh, typed up, and I need to submit this. I typed up to this guy, have you gone off your meds? The next one, I'm not sure I'm going to approve that one until I've had a chance to actually go in and and edit it just a little. In fact, I will just go ahead and edit it now. Language. Hey, language. Why don't you recognize that? And, okay, must not edit. Must not edit. I'm reading ahead of where I'm reading ahead of where I'm actually speaking. This is horrible. This, this, there are things misspelled so badly here that it's kind of insulting. Why don't you recognize that Open Carry Texas is the most effective gun group in the United States? Um, because they're not. Reading on, Open Carry Tex, Texas has passed, or Open Carry Texas passed Open Carry. You mean the bill that they opposed? Campus Carry. You mean the bill that the NRA and TSRA has put lots of work, including students for concealed campus, has put lots of work into, and that Open Carry Texas only went up there and testified at the hearing? That's all they did? Okay, yeah, I could see y'all claiming credit for that, but it's not that just because you claim credit doesn't mean you did succeed in passing it. Okay, let's see. What else does he say they passed? Courthouse Carry. I really don't think so and more and then in capital letters he puts in this session end of capital letters in TSACS I think he meant type Texas but he transposed his X and his S at least he didn't uh, transpose anything else in that one because that could have been embarrassing in Maryland we got the decision that assault weapons are protected under Hellar I think it's supposed to be Heller by federal court preventing assault weapons bans in the United States. We are working to get open carry passed in Florida. I hate to tell you this, but the Florida Senate kind of nixed it. We got the president to fix having to get permission from cops to own silencers and machine guns. I assume by we, he means open carry Texas. What has the NRA and TSRA done? Uh, pretty much everything you said, they, everything you said, Open Carry Texas did in Texas, the NRA and TSRA did. Plus, if you keep going back, you'll find all kinds of things like the parking lot protection, um, Castle Doctrine, Concealed Carry. I mean, that's just a short list. There's a long list. I'm just not going to bring it up. It'll be kind of embarrassing for you. Anyways, I'm going to update the comment, and I'm going to approve it. And then I'm going to reply, seriously, take your meds. Let's move on. Okay, this is kind of crazy that some people just never get past. And I don't know why. I don't know how these kinds of crazy get drawn to this podcast. I really don't. But you know what? Let's top it off. Something I saw in the Texas CHL forum. I should have mentioned it last week, and I may have, but just in case I didn't, Charles Cotton, who is a member of the NRA Board of Directors, he is... Uh, he's an attorney in the Houston area. He's been very active in Texas gun rights for decades. He's getting closer to releasing his Texas Firearms Coalition podcast. And let me just say, I look forward to it when it releases. At one time, Texas was the only state with two podcasts dedicated to firearms that related only to the state of Texas. And then after six or seven episodes, Open Carry Texas kind of folded shop on their podcast, that is. It didn't go very far. It didn't do very well. Why? Maybe because there's more work than C.J. Grisham realized. Charles Cotton realizes there's quite a bit of work that goes into a podcast, and I think he'll actually succeed. 
with that said, I am going to hit the audio clip that tells you how to find the show on social media. And we're going to come back. And when we come back, I'm going to touch on a very short, brief little plea for help on a non-gun issue. Then we're going to touch on a very short and brief topic before we move on to the news. But first, here's how to find it on social media. Or I thought, hmm, maybe I don't have social media on there. Hmm, this is kind of embarrassing. There it goes. Oops. Well, folks, I may have broke the soundboard. Anyways, if you go to the website, you'll find all the links for the social media, including Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, although I really don't use that that much. Google Plus, I don't really use it that much. It just lets you know when new videos are posted. But anyways, all the social media stuff is available on the website, gunrightsintexas.com. I am rebooting the tablet and muting that particular channel so you don't have to listen to it. The moral of that story, don't fix it if it's not broken. Okay, our, our plea for help on a non-gun issue. So today I'm sitting back, I'm relaxing. It's Monday. I'm actually off on this Monday, so I'm, I plan to use the day for a number of things. Catching up on podcasts, get some stuff done to the Jeep, that type of thing. So I'm listening to my various podcasts that I need to. One of the few that I listen to at real speed instead of double speed is Come and Take It. Come and Take It is a history podcast. It's a Texas history podcast. I love these guys. I was actually a guest on their show one time. I keep needing to return the favor, but we haven't had an opportunity. My schedule's been kind of random lately. But anyways, their episode today is about San Jacinto. And not so much the history of it, but it's a plea for help. The battlefield at San Jacinto is sacred ground to Texans. I'm sorry, but it is. And that sacred ground still has areas that have yet to be excavated so that historical artifacts can be removed and preserved. Now, there's a plan to dump dredge material into the uh, into a part of it to restore the marsh or something like that. Maybe it's the marsh, maybe it's a wetland, but they plan to restore this. But, but there's a problem with it. You see, the dumping of dredge material, can hap- if it happens before artifacts that are in that area are excavated and removed so that they can be preserved, these artifacts will at best be difficult to recover in the future. In fact, they may degrade to a point where they're no longer of any archaeological value or possibly even be destroyed outright before they can be saved. Now, some people are saying, well, this will preserve those artifacts because it'll keep looters from getting them out. No, it won't. You see, you have metal, you put it in the ground, it corrodes. You have wood, you put it in the ground, and it rots. You have leather in the ground, it will rot. All these artifacts are going away the longer they stay in the ground. If we can excavate them, recover them, preserve them, and make them available to the public, it's much better than leaving them in the ground. Now, I don't think we, I don't think we should be opposed to dumping the dredge material in there and restoring the marsh. We shouldn't. We should be encouraging the restoration of the marsh, but only after these artifacts are recovered and all the documentation is done so that the sacred ground and what it contains is preserved for Texans in the future. Now, I don't, I don't carry this plea out as well as uh, the folks over at Come and Take It do, and they're basically reading to you the letter of a gentleman who this is his cause. So I'm going to tell you right now, go to brainstaple.com, find the episode. If you're listening to this one, um, well, today I'm recording this on January, not January, February 8th. If you're listening to this the week of February 8th, it'll be right there on the front page. Otherwise, click podcast and it'll be down there somewhere. But go to brainstaple.com, find the episode uh, titled San Jacinto Battlefield Conservation and listen to it. In fact, I'll throw a link directly to that uh, show page in my show notes. So you can go to gunrightsintexas.com slash 081, find the link, go to their website, and you can download or you can just listen to it on their website, and you can read their show notes. I strongly recommend, if you listen to only one other podcast besides mine ever, listen to this one, please. Okay, let's move on. Are gun owners indifferent to open carry? Or is there another reason that we're not seeing massive reports in the media of open carry across Texas? You know what, let's go through and let's let's name off a list of reasons why there may not be open carry in the news as much as it is. Those who open carry are, for the most part, behaving themselves. 
Okay, that's that'd be a good reason it wouldn't be in the news. Maybe those who are open carrying are wearing jackets are, and are inadvertently concealed carrying because, well, it's winter. Maybe the public's not reacting to open carry because they know those licensed to carry are not a threat. Okay, here's what it really is. You see, the media is too busy trying to find the blood in the streets, and they're so busy looking for it that they cannot find, take the time to look for anything else. Or maybe the media is too busy attributing every gun ban, campus carry decision, or other news item to being associated with open carry or part of the open carry law. Maybe that's why. Or maybe gun owners are not open carry. Let's take a look at these reasons, shall we? Then we'll wrap this segment. We'll wrap this section up. Or a segment. Black. Get my. I'm getting confused here. I'm too tired. We'll wrap this section up and then move on to. Hopefully, I'll be able to play the contact information and then we can. We'll move on to the news after that. I think this first one is a big part of it. You see, those who are open carrying are for the most part behaving themselves. That makes a lot of sense because. Those with a license to carry previously a concealed handgun license are among the most well-behaved people in the state of Texas. In fact, they're the most well-behaved segment of the population that is tracked by the Department of Public Safety. So that is probably a good reason. You know, those who are open carrying are wearing jackets. And that's a good possibility. They're wearing jackets and they're, they're jackets getting outside the, getting on the outside of the holster and concealing the gun. That's a good possibility. I don't really think it's the poss- the most likely possibility why you're not seeing more open carry in the news. But, you know, that's a good reason. Maybe the public is not reacting to open carry because they know those licensed to carry are not a threat. That's also a good possibility. You see, in the past, the public has seen people open carrying, and these people have been law enforcement officers. And for the most part, they've had nothing to fear. Here the news is they're, you know, talking about open carry and those with a license, and these people are you know, they're getting this on the news and they're thinking, okay, they're making all this uh, hysteria out about open carry, but these are the same people who currently have a license and they haven't created any kind of issue yet. Maybe these are good people. In fact, I'm going to bet they are. Maybe that's what's going on. That's a, That'd be a good reason. It really would. But you know, the media really could be too busy trying to find the blood in the streets. And because of that, they may be unable to look for anything else. I mean, that does make sense. It really does. But I don't think it's the reason. Now, one thing I've noticed is a lot of your local medias or media outlets like newspapers, you have, like, well, the fines for signs law. That's attributed to open carry. Campus carry is attributed to open carry. All these small local papers are making these very obvious and very annoying mistakes. But you really can't do anything about it because they're not going to worry about doing a retraction or a correction. And finally, are gun owners simply not open carrying? Well, to tell you the truth, that's not the case. I've open carried, well, I think I can count it on one hand. If I open carry again, I think I'll have to have two hands, I think. The funny thing about that is, every time I've open carried, I've only had two encounters with the general public where I've had a converse. No, I've had three encounters with the general public where I've had a conversation. One encounter was a gentleman asking me where he could go and get his license because he's moved here and he needs to find out and he's not sure how he gets a Texas license. He's carrying on an out-of-state license. He's also wanting to know if his out-of-state license, which is a non-resident license, would allow him to carry openly. Well, I told him who he could talk to to take the class, where to go to sign up for the state, but he told me he has to get a Texas license or his non-resident license from another state will no longer be any good when he has to renew. You see, he moved from the state that does not offer a non-resident license, but he got this non-resident license from another state, and he was able to, he was able to change his address to Texas, but when he got his new license with the new address, they told him when he renewed, he'd have to have a Texas license, or they wouldn't renew his from this state. I'm not going to name a state. I don't, I think I know which one it is, but I may be wrong. Encounter number two. I'm at the gas pump. I'm pumping gas, and this gentleman walks over, and he asked me, are you going to use that thing on me? So not unless you give me a reason to. And uh, he goes into the spiel about all he would need is his hands. So I'm okay. I said, I understand that, but I'm not that good with my hands. 
And if I'm jumped by 10, 15, uh, younger, aggressive, possibly better fit males that are intent on injuring or killing me, I would like to have something to even up the odds. Well, he wasn't going to change his position, but he actually understood and understood my position and respected it. We left on good terms. The other encounter was today. I was talking to a lady at, in the line at a store. We're carrying on a conversation. We discussed uh, where I work, where she works, problems with coworkers, and we came to the conclusion that high school kids are more trouble than they're worth when it comes to employment. We told, I checked out, told her to have a nice day. She told me to have a nice day, and we went on about our way. The gun was never mentioned. So we had a pro-gun conversation. We have had a anti-gun conversation, and we've had a non-gun conversation while I'm open carrying. Now, of course, I'm not counting encounters where I talk to my buddy Ray from the pro-gun podcast uh, because, well, these conversations are not about open carry outside of our normal conversations. If I counted those, they would seriously skew the pro-gun conversations. So basically, I think I think you're seeing a lot of neutrality on open carry with the media. Nothing bad has happened, and they're still holding their breath, waiting for it. Or maybe they passed out from holding their breath. With that said, we're going to try to run the audio clip that tells you how to get in touch with the show. And if that works, I'm going to run the audio clip that tells you how to find the show on social media that didn't work earlier. And we're trying it now. Since that worked, let's run the audio clip for the social media as well. You're a news girl. Let's call her, let's see, this week, let's call her Kiara. That's an unusual name, and it's not close to her name, so I won't accidentally use hers as I have in the past and then had to go back and edit it out. But let's hit our news, and Kiara came up with six or seven stories that I kept. I think it was just six, but she submitted to me about ten, and I kind of remove some that I felt were a little bit redundant, some that I felt were not prepared well enough by the original source, and some that, well, I just didn't really think were appropriate. Okay, so, gun rights in Texas news. A Bastrop County, Texas deputy possibly owes his life to the failure of gun control advocates. You see, if those advocates had been successful in disarming the public, then the Marine veteran, Scott Perkins, who was armed, would not have had his concealed weapon to ward off the suspect who was brutally beating the deputy. Now, many of you probably heard about this uh, story. The I think I think the headline was Texas cop brutally attacked roadside until hero Marine shows up with his gun. Um, you may have heard about it, but basically, this officer pulls somebody over. At some point, it descends into a physical scuffle, and the suspect is beating the cop senseless. Marine shows up draws his weapon, orders the suspect to freeze, suspect quits assaulting police officer and runs away, only to be arrested later. Overall, gun control failed, citizens have guns, Marine stops cop assault, or assault on a cop. When, when. Moving on, a mother in Benbrook, I assume I pronounced that correctly, Texas, purchased a handgun after being attacked at her own home, or actually not at her own home. Uh, this is, uh, in a mall parking lot. Let me fix that. Okay. A mother in Benbrook, Texas, purchased a handgun after being attacked in a mall parking lot. She is grateful that her attacker sprayed her with mace rather than using the hammer they had in their back seat. Now, she, on the other hand, plans to be even more grateful in the future if somebody tries to attack her because she'll be grateful that she had the ability to defend herself because she plans to carry and only go to businesses that do not prohibit, oh, uh, do not prohibit carry at all. Now, you see... The article is actually about her going and buying a gun at a local academy. Personally, I'm all for this lady being armed for self-defense. And I hope she goes and she gets more training on how to be situationally aware, because that might have prevented the attack in the first place all by its lonesome, and on how to best use that weapon. Both of those are critical to being able to defend yourself. Now, in the politics category, we have two stories. North of Lubbock, you will find Hill County. The Hill County Commissioner's Court has decided to ban open carry in their courthouse and all other county-owned buildings using Texas Penal Code 30.7. And what's truly ironic about this is Texas Penal Code Section 30.7e reads, It is an exception to the application of this section that the property on which the license holder openly carries the handgun is owned or leased by a government entity 
and is not a premises or other place on which the license holder is prohibited from carrying the handgun under Section 4603 or 46035. Now, you may be wondering um, what's going on here. Well, the ban concealed carry from the courthouse, or not courthouse, from the courtrooms, but they're banning 30 or they're using 30 7 to ban open carry from all county owned buildings. The reason is they know if they post a 30 6 sign or other sign designed to keep somebody from carrying concealed, the fines for signs law kicks in and they can they can lose their uh, their budget in a hurry. Now, I have a problem here. You see, they know that they won't there's no basis in the law for them to be fined, but if somebody is arrested or ticketed or otherwise punished under this law or under these signs being posted, I hope the case can be made for a civil suit to punish these people. I really do. You now this one, I I was a little skeptical about leaving it in place. A listener submitted this one as it reads. Contrary to popular belief, the NRA is not dedicated to supporting just Republicans. In fact, the A rating of Gene Green, that sounds like a wrestler's name. I mean, it really sounds like a uh, NL from somewhere in somewhere weighing in at 350 pounds. It's Gene Green, and he does an elbow drop off the ceiling. But in all seriousness, Gene Green is a Democrat, and it's a point of contention his opponent is attempting to use in a bid to defeat him in the upcoming primary election that he maintains an NRA A rating. Now, he's had his rating drop to a C and to an A-. minus. He's never had an A+, plus. Not, that I, not that the article points out, but you can... This article actually shows that if you're pro-gun, you can get the NRA support. It doesn't matter what your position on other topics are. Some people will say, well, that's why we need Gun Owners of America or the National Association for Gun Rights, because they will factor in things like birth control and abortion and nuclear armament and um, what else? No. You see, the NRA is a one-issue organization which if you're trying to effectively lobby for legislation on an issue, you need to be a one-issue organization. A candidate's position on abortion should not, under any circumstance, influence your organization's decision on a completely unrelated issue such as gun rights. While I may be opposed to abortion, if I'm the leader of a Second Amendment organization and it comes time to choose between someone that has a B rating for from us, but they're good on abortion, or they're bad on abortion, but they have an A plus rating from us, who do I endorse? Well, as a single issue organization, I endorse the one that has an A plus rating. And that's really what it boils down to. Now we're going to move on. You see, we have a few stories that, well, for the lack of a better term, we're going to call that category bad behavior. A Texas tabloid has threatened to publish the address of all San Antonio police officers. Now, this is a deplorable tactic on the part of the tabloid and an effort to increase sales by promising to place the officers and their families at risk. People associated with the Hands Up, Don't Shoot movement and other anti-police movements have made threats of violence against police officers, and they have actually been linked to attacks on police officers, including the murder of some of them. Oh, man, just reading that article, mm, it makes me mad. Must maintain the uh the non-explicit rating for this episode no foul language we're going to wrap up our news segment with a story about open carry texas why well because open carry texas no i'm kidding uh because it's a, it's important that we touch on it the way that our news girl wrote it or wrote the description for us open carry texas members have reportedly been or have reportedly been making a scene at Walmart stores when asked to show their license. And let me say, this is not in her comments, but let me just say this. Some members, in fact, I'll go in and I'll change that. Some Open Carry Texas members, but moving on, she continues with, Once more, Open Carry Texas is doing what they do best, and that is showing gun owners what not to do. And that is the God's truth. The article goes to an article, or the link, goes to an article with the Texas Houston, or the Houston, Texas Chronicle. Good Lord, I'm too tired to be doing a podcast. And it has a, it actually embeds the YouTube video. I'll tell you right now, 
if you go into a business and they want to see your license on the condition that they're going to, they don't want you in there unless you show them your license, you have two choices. You can leave or you can show them your license. If you leave, you can cover it up and come right back in and see if they repeat the process. If they do, your options are once again, leave or show them your license. If they don't, don't worry about it. Think of it as being akin to the signs, no shirt, no shoes, no service. You're not being forced to go in there. So don't, don't make a scene. Don't cause them a problem and don't make them post a post signage banning you from the store. If they post if signage banning you from the store, they're also banning me from the store. And I don't want that. If they're relatively friendly to open carry or concealed carry, that's better than being against it. Now I am working on a few things that I'm, I'm not yet ready to go into detail on, but this article is kind of linked to it. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation. Walmart is checking licenses because they are concerned somebody may open carry into their store without a license. If they allow that, TABC is required by law to take action. It may just be a simple reprimand, or it may be striking their license for that location. Whatever it is, whatever that action they have to take, Walmart does not want them to do that. So Walmart's trying to protect themselves. Now with that said, I'm going to run the music that ends the show, and we're going to wrap it up with that. I'm not going to come back. I'm not going to make any discussion. But in the future, we're going to come back to this because I have been in, I've been working on a lot of things. And part of it is partly, partly because I want to get this information out to the public, and therefore I do this with my audience. And part of it's because, well, I got plans. With that said, please stay safe and carry responsibly.